Hello, I'm Michael Corlum, and this is Mission Asteroid, a 1981 interactive fiction game by Ken and Roberta Williams. Released first for the Apple II, and that's the version that I'm playing, and later on for the Atari 8-bit and Commodore 64 computers. So here we see our picture, our, our weird green building, and our text, you are in front of a building. The game uses a standard for the time, a strict verb noun parser. We can enter two words at most, uh, and for the most part, they're going to be verb noun. And so let's start out by checking our inventory. You hear a noise, beep, 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 a watch. You are in front of a building. All right, so we are wearing a watch. Let's look at our watch. The beeper watch has a switch on it. The time is 12.05. You hear a noise, beep, beep, beep. Uh, and the time is important in this game because we do have a very kind of strict timeline we're on, and every turn we take takes up five minutes of that time. Just sort of keep that in mind as we play. Uh, we don't really have a lot of room to mess about or explore or make the wrong choices or go the wrong way or use the wrong words as a command because the timer will keep counting down every turn. So let's go ahead and uh, push our switch. A voice from the beeper watch says, this is mission control. You are to report to the briefing room at once. The password is starstruck. And I'm going to write that password down because I will not remember it otherwise. Well, let's go ahead and go inside the building by opening the door. And the door opens and our graphics are updated. Now, I'm running this on a fairly quick, fast machine, but the earliest Apple IIs uh, would have changed that very, very slowly. You would have had to watch each line of pixels be filled in meticulously, uh, which is maddeningly slow now, but at the time when you're used to, you know, disk drive load times, or even cassette tape load times, uh, it would have not been as aggravating. Okay, it still would have been a little aggravating, but not as aggravating. To go inside, we go door. You're in the front office of the building. There is a secretary here. There is a doorway to the north and a doorway to the east. And a command, north. The secretary says, password, please. All right, and this is where we can use our starstruck. Now, we might try saying, say, starstruck, or we can just try typing in starstruck. And that works. The secretary says, you may now pass. You are at a junction of hallways. One hallway goes east and west. The other goes south. There's a general here. I think you had better salute. You're in a briefing room. All right, we'll go ahead and salute. And I wonder if that general is behind a podium or if that's a desk or a, a sign. I'm, I'm not sure. The general salutes back and says, an asteroid is about to hit the Earth. You must fly up to the asteroid and blow it up. Of course, this information is top secret. The asteroid is projected to strike the Earth at 7.15 tonight. Then he leaves. And that's the time we have. We basically have uh, 7 hours and 15 minutes uh, to complete our, our task here. Um, and that isn't that many turns, to be perfectly honest. That's about, uh, about 80, actually. And so each time we, uh, we go to the wrong place or examine something or look at our watch or I think even just enter a command that the game doesn't understand, that eats up one of our 80-something turns. So as much as I love to explore around in interactive fiction games and look at things and, you know, kind of indulge myself with, with what the creators have, have given us, uh, this game does not really give us that kind of margin. In fact, uh, if you have not played it before, you will almost certainly lose simply because you will have to backtrack to do things that you didn't know you had to do earlier, and you just don't have the time. Uh, this is not, in, in my personal opinion, <laughs> great game design, but you have to keep in mind that at this time, the interactive fiction genre was largely uh, treasure hunts. 
you would go around to collect all of the valuable treasure you could find, and then you would get a score. This game is different. There is no score, and we have an actual goal of saving the Earth in an undefined kind of way. Uh, it could perhaps do a little better in letting the player know what they are to do next, but it's not too terrible uh, compared to a lot of games. This does mean that, you know, I have played this before, and in this playthrough I am going to be approaching it with the perspective of someone who knows what to do and what not to do, because uh, if I don't, we won't finish the game. There is this scat on the table. You are in the computer room. There is an Apple computer here. There are doorways to the east and west. All right, so let's go ahead and get the diskette. A little disk work. Yes. I think so. Yes, there we go. The graphics are updated without the disk. And, and this is, again, a limitation of the parser. We want to put the disk into the disk drive. But we have to do it in two stages because each command can only be two words. So put disk, enter. Put diskette into what? Answer question. And then um, is it in drive or into drive? I think it's into drive. Up on the monitor comes your flight plan. Go right for 10 minutes, up for 5 minutes, left for 15 minutes, down for 5 minutes, left for 5 minutes, and uh, up. I, again, I will be writing this down because... Uh, it's, complica it's complicated, and they're not going to tell you again. Uh, up for 10 minutes. And, you know, one thing it also does not tell you, among the many things it doesn't tell you, is that you can, you, can, you know, simplify that. Uh, because it had to go in left and right and up and down. But, you know, if you picture it as a grid, your flight plan is a lot simpler. So we know our flight plan. I have that written down. Right 10, up 5, left 15, down 5, left 5, up 10. So we can go ahead and move on. There are some explosives here. You are in the supply room. There are doorways to the north, east, and west. All right, well, let's go ahead and get the explosive. There we go. And we'll go east. You're in the gym. There are doorways to the north, east, and west. Well, you know how I said that, uh, you know, we, we I will be making choices based on what I know about the game that, you know, a first-time player wouldn't know? Well, that, that's part of the gameplay. You are expected to play this multiple times and to, on um, future playthroughs, use the knowledge gained by your, you know, past deaths to defeat the game. Uh, again, not, not great interactive fiction design, but it is 1981. You know, Woods and Crowther's adventure wasn't too long ago. So let's go ahead. We're going to exercise. And we're going to spell exercise correctly this time. Okay, you needed a good workout. Now, you may ask yourself, hey, buddy, you know, you only have seven hours to, uh, to save the Earth. Why are you working out? Well, uh, I'll tell you later, but it's, it's the game makes you, essentially, is, is the answer. You were in the shower room. There's a doorway to the west. Well... We just had our workout, time to take a shower. Ah, that feels refreshing. I'm sure it does. Now that I have gotten my uh, my my workout in and uh, taken a shower, I can continue on. You are in a long tunnel. There is a doorway to the east. You are in the pre-flight checkout room. There are doorways to the west and south, and this is why we uh, we took our we took the time to exercise and take a shower. Because if we do not, uh, the uh, doctor here will tell us first of all that we're out of shape, and second of all that we smell bad. He will refuse to let us save the world until we have had our daily workout. 
And exercising once is enough to go from out of shape to in shape. And that's how it works. Uh, well, that is slightly illogical. It also is easily explained to the player. There aren't really puzzles in this game uh, so much as there are uh, tasks to accomplish, and none of them are as oblique as you'd see in other adventure games, and, and that is perhaps why it's, you know, presented as a beginner's game. There's nothing puzzle-like to go on. There's just logically presented tasks. Well, I say logically, but, you know, here we are. Um, and I guess that is somewhat easier, but the time limit is incredibly uh, strict. So we really don't have time to, you know, do much other than what is required. You're on an airfield. You see a rocket in the distance. And we'll go north. You know, and I bring this up because a lot of these games will have puzzles that are far more illogical than you've got to go and take a shower before you go, you know, get in the rocket. Um, just just really bizarre stuff with, with objects that have no reason to be where they are. So in this, there is more logical consistency than in a lot of games. You're below the rocket. There is a ladder going up. There is a road going south behind you. You're at the door of the rocket. A ladder is going down. There is a button by the door. Push button. The door opens. Very, very square room on this rocket. You're in the vacuum lock room of the rocket. There is a blue and an orange button on the wall. Push blue button. The north door opens and the south door closes and the ladder rolls up into the rocket and you hear a whooshing sound. A bit of a run-on sentence there, but, you know, we know what's going on. You are in the control room of the rocket. There is a console and a window here. There is a violet button on the wall beside you. And this is one of those places where we would spend a turn, you know, reading the instructions and playing with the buttons to figure out what they do, but uh, we don't really have time. So just to uh, simplify, uh, the throttle here, uh, you, you know, you push it to take off, you pull it to land, and the white, blue, orange, and black buttons are various... Um, uh, directions to fly in space, the, the thrusters. I don't remember exactly what the violet button does, and I'm not going to press it and find out. It's probably self-destruct or something. But let's go ahead and uh, fly away and take our, our trip to the asteroid. And there we go, with surprising little fanfare, we are in orbit. You are orbiting the Earth, that's it. No countdown, no description of the rocket shaking, nothing. So to sort of uh, simplify our travel, uh, we are going to push the white button twice and the orange button twice, and that should get us to the asteroid. And that's really the, you know, the, the, the sum of, of our our flight plan here, going right for 10 minutes, up for 5 minutes, left for 15, down for 5, left for 5, up for 10. It simplifies into, you know, uh, up twice and uh, left twice. Given that each turn is, is 5 minutes. And, you know, this isn't really how spaceflight works. Uh, you go in a direction, you keep moving until you reverse that direction at a constant velocity so you know but again this is not a scientific simulation it's a adventure game note that however if we were to get lost it would be very difficult to find our way back also note that the display window does uh, change 
as we uh, push our buttons. Uh, but this is not a navigational aid in any way. We, you know, all right, there we go. We're at the asteroid. We can pull the throttle and land. And here we are. There is a spacesuit here. You are in the storage room of the rocket. There is a doorway to the east. So let's go ahead and get spacesuit. There we go. It's kind of creepy how it was just standing there. First time I played, I thought it was, uh, you know, one of your crewmen that had just been hiding in the closet the whole time. All right, here we are in the airlock. You are wearing the suit. All right. I didn't look at the suit, but there's a dial uh, this time, but there's a dial on it. The air is on, and this is our second timer. We have to get down to the asteroid, find the place where we're supposed to plant our explosives, which you're not told to do. Once you get to the asteroid, you just kind of have to intuit what to do, uh, and then get back to the ship before our oxygen runs out. And there is not a very big supply, given our five-minute turns. The north door closes, the south door opens, and the ladder unrolls to the ground, and you hear a whooshing sound. Although I would ask if the north door is really north. We're not on Earth. We're on an asteroid. Uh, but north is just towards the center of the screen at all times. We are always oriented with our face to the north uh, in this game. Although I, I think that when you're on the spaceship, you should be navigating by nautical terms, perhaps. Bow, stern, uh, port, starboard. You're on a small asteroid. Again, I, I know where to go, and if I didn't, we'd be wandering and the Earth would be destroyed. You're on a small asteroid. There's a cave here. I think that's the Earth in the background, though. It doesn't get bigger later. Go cave. You can do it. You're in a cave. A passageway goes south. A very regular passageway with a frightfully right-angled turn. You are in a cave. It ends right here. There's a very deep pit here. A passageway goes north. And this is where we drop our explosives. How many minutes? 90, 120, 150, or 180? Well, 90 is not going to be enough. Uh, it'll get us back to our ship, but we won't get far enough from the asteroid before it explodes. Uh, 150 or 180, I don't want to check my watch because that'll take up time but i don't think we have enough uh you know to uh to dither um so i'm gonna set it for 120 which seems to be the median response here okay there you go that's the response uh drop explosives where in the pit or on the floor well gee i don't know in pit Okay, you have dropped the explosives into the pit. And there you go. Uh, that's what we need to do to destroy the asteroid. Uh, land on it, find a pit, and drop some explosives. Let's just get back to the ship. And the directions do get a little weird here. We came uh, from the west, but we don't go west to get back to our ship. No, we have to go. We just went north twice, and now we have to go south. Why? I don't know. Asteroids are difficult to navigate. Push 
blue button. Well, I guess we're going to push just blue. The north door opens, the south door closes, the ladder rolls up to the rocket. You hear a wishing sound. All right, and now take off the suit. I have, in the fast, uh, taken off the suit before cycling the airlock. And that is not a good time. Oxygen is no longer coming into the suit. See, there we go. We barely made it uh, with the most you know, efficient route possible. We barely got back to the control room. We barely got the suit off before the oxygen ran out. All right, to get home, uh, we pretty much do the same thing we did uh, before to get here, but in reverse. And then uh, we push, here, here we are still in space. Uh, it doesn't, you know, this is not what we did the first time around, but I guess the Earth kept moving in orbit, or I don't know, we just have to push the white button uh, to get back into orbit. You're orbiting the Earth. Pull throttle. You are in the control room of the rocket. There is a console and a window here. Be, there is a violet button on the wall beside you. And now we just kind of wait uh, for the uh, for the asteroid to explode. So we do have, we do have a few turns leeway because we were so efficient. For oh, there we go. Four turns. We had four extra turns. Uh, the asteroid has exploded. You have saved the Earth. Ken and Roberta Williams, thank you for playing Mission Asteroid. Goodbye. You are in the control room of the rocket. There is no end to the game. We can continue walking around if we want. We can take a look at those those areas uh, that we uh, missed the first time. You know, that we had to run past to, in order, you know, we only had our four-turn leeway. Uh, but if you'll notice, uh, something interesting about this as we continue to sit here and look instead of leaving. Uh, we could theoretically do this forever. Uh, but they actually forgot to implement, or they forgot to, to end the, the timer uh, for the, the asteroid. So, you know, after the game, there is no end. Uh, the asteroid has just struck the Earth, destroying all life. Would you like to play again? Uh, no. Ken and Billy Williams, thank you for playing Mission Asteroid. Goodbye, and we're still here. So even though we both saved the Earth and saw it destroyed, the game continues. But that's it. That's, that's the game. That's Mission Asteroid. Uh, I hope you liked my playthrough slash breakdown, whatever this is. Uh, if you did, I'm going to be doing more of this where I examine the stories of, of games that will have a little more story uh, in the future. So subscribe to the channel and uh, let me know in the comments what you thought. Uh, I would not recommend playing this game, uh, but if you are interested in earlier uh, text adventure and graphic adventure games, there are some out there that are in fact worth playing and we'll be covering those in the future.